next section of the toolbox is actual forward drives. Once you've stopped the attack with whatever it is we, we, we just covered, finger dart, whip kick, tiger claw, you need to now take the fight back to him and drive back in. This is where a lot of confusion uh, of the difference between gross motor movements that are found in close combat training and complex motor movements that are found in most martial arts occurs. And a perfect example is a simple elbow. Right, how, how, it can't be any simpler than throwing an elbow, but you'd be amazed at how much confusion this is, right? And that's because in martial arts there's about a hundred different ways to throw an elbow. Elbows to cut somebody, elbows to knock their head back. What we're interested in this is just forward movement drive. So an elbow in close combat training is making a fist as tight as possible and keeping their body torque almost like a piston. So it's wherever, wherever you hit, all right, whether it's center mass, whether it's up top, right, whether it's down below, whether it's rear to the face, whether it's rear to the body. And again, you'll see this when we go over uh, grab defenses and, and, and whatnot, because without this, this fist, you don't have the full power. Without this torque, you don't have the full power. Again, it's martial arts and fighting that you'll see in Ultimate Fighting, uh, in UFC, and the cage, and whatever else, their goal is much different than ours. Their goal is to stop the fight as soon as possible. Not, <laughs> because that means they won the fight. Whether the guy is cut and the ref stops it, whether they choke him out and the guy taps out. In the street, on the battlefield, you don't have those kind of luxuries. Now, it, there is some obvious some transfer to both, and it's great for training, but the difference is what we're interested in is forward drive. Same thing with a knee. You'll see in Muay Thai, for example, they use a lot of side knees, right? They use a lot of knees to the leg. Those are all great, but what we need to do is drive forward. So all knees in close combat training are straight up and stepping down. And what you're doing now, whether you hit them with your body, whether you hit them with your knee, whether you hit them with nothing, it doesn't matter. He is now a step back from where he was, and he was on his heels. So any attack, the guy's just walking forward, your finger dart, your tiger claw, your knee, you step forward. Your elbow, you step forward. Elbow again, you step forward. Everything, forward drive. Knees and elbows are obviously pretty self-explanatory now we've gotten the, uh, the, the simple details out. The magic move is called the edge of hand, right? It's the old karate chop, the judo chop. It is the ultimate gross motor movement. You basically can be shot, wounded, stabbed. Um, you can have a broken arm. Your shoulder can be popped out. Doesn't matter. You can still pull this off. Edge of hand is anything that hits from tip of the pinky to the tip of the elbow. It can come across to the neck. It can come down on the collarbone. It can come vertically down. It can come straight up, almost like a forearm shiver. It can be a long ax hand across. But the whole point of this is that it too is a driving movement. It might not be driving them straight back. It might be move driving them down like the tiger claw was. So why don't, we, why don't we do this? This is kind of a cool little thing. Come forward, right? Finger dart, tiger claw, edge of hand, right? Every single one, drove him back on his heels, drove him back to this angle. We have him totally open, stand just like this, don't move. Now, for those of you with martial arts experience up the Wahoo, this is where you should now apply the martial arts. All right? This is where you can double leg him down. This is where if you have a striking experience where you can target specifically the jawline and, and, and knock him out. All right? This is the point where he's totally off balance, back on his heels. To be able to do that without stopping the attack and without driving back right, is almost an impossibility in an adrenaline-fueled, fear-induced state. All right? I don't care how many times you've done a double leg tackle. I don't care how many times you've practiced on the makawara hitting somebody right, or, 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 or conditioning your fist to hit somebody. He's too movable. He's too movable. That forward drive coming back. If I hit him and miss, he's already got me on my heels. I don't care how good I am at counter punching. Right? He could drive me back, drive my head into the pavement. It doesn't really matter. The whole point is that I have now stopped the attack, driving him back, 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 driving him back. So we have our stop hits, right? We have our tiger claw also. All right, we have our drives. Elbow, 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 
elbow, knee, 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 back. Edge your hand, edge your hand, edge your hand, edge your hand, edge your hand. Again, not target specific. Aim above the neck. Anywhere above or aim below the waist. We're going to cover later. Uh, edge your hands against the lower body uh, when, when you're wrapped up in a headlock and whatever else. But these driving movements, again, you have him back on his heels, that's it. All right? The goal, the goal through all of this is to take ground and put him down. Put him down could be against a wall. It could be against the ground, somewhere that you have a, a, a backing. Because if you are doing these hits up in the air and he's moving, as opposed to lay down on the ground. Thank you, Mr. Cooperative. As opposed to hitting him down here or stomping him or some of the other things we're gonna, we're, we're gonna cover. Or you can drag him over, right? And stomp, boom, right on his arm, all right? There's no, you can stand up now, thank you. There, there's no give to the ground or a wall. So when you do these driving movements, even though we're, we're classifying them in this toolbox as, uh, as driving as such, when you get against a flat, hard surface, wall, ground, car, uh, anything, piece of furniture, right, these driving movements start turning into damaging movements. Uh, another great, 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 and I actually showed this on, today, on the Today Show, Great driving movement is the double chin jab. We're going to cover the, the single chin jab, which is a more of a finishing move next, but the double chin jab is very, very simple. It's actually, this is a great move that I teach uh, old women uh, when, I, when I teach them, just simply because it's so easy to do and so nasty. Come on in, All right? Double, double chin jab is literally almost getting low and coming up high. And so for little old ladies to do, this is great because they're little old ladies. So most of the people that are attacking them are going to be larger. But to come in, double chin jab, targeting right. Doesn't matter whether it's neck, whether it's face. All right. It's just using almost like a double, uh, double tiger claw. But you don't have to worry so much about raking the face on this one. It's literally coming from underneath, up, and back, and boom. All right. Perfect, perfect for driving. So they're coming in, stop them, whip kick, finger dart, tiger claw, edge of hand, double chin jab, edge of hand, tiger claw. It doesn't matter. They're all interchangeable, all right? As long as you stop that attack and drive back into them, you're good. So let's cover some finishers. <laughs> 